Hello, everyone, and happy Halloween. Welcome to a very special edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elishar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elishar, the chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. It, the reason why it's our, it's our very first Halloween special. With the Halloween specials, I'm bringing actors and content creators who have produced some of our best, who are affiliated with some of the greatest villains of all time. And today's guest is a talented voice actor who has voiced Megatron for five incarnations of the Transformers, Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Transformers, or Transformers Armada, Energon, Transformers Cybertron. He's also voiced some of Marvel's greatest characters, and he's also the announcer for Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. So please help me welcome David K. Hey! What's that? And you, the Halloween version, right? It's my, uh, of course, uh, I always have that in my uh, my studio. And Vincent Price, yes. yes. <laughs> Vincent uh, Price is a great one. Yeah, He's, there you go. I loved his version of Egghead and, of course, Vincent Van Gogh, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Yeah, it's phenomenal. He's, oh, man, he was he was so great. He was so great. It's the way he told a story, and uh, it, it, you hear that voice, and it, you're already creeped out as soon as you, he opens his mouth. It just, uh, just uh Every Halloween, I'll, I'll throw in an old, uh, uh, an old Vincent Price movie. Uh, they're, they're still, they're still great. <laughs> I just love them. Awesome. Speaking of creepy, I gotta say, Megatron is one of my all-time favorite villains because of your oh, voice. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Here he is, the MP40. And I still have, one, I have one in the box for all you toy collectors, and, and it's not coming out. But uh, and this is not going to be taken apart because I'll never put it back together again. I've, you know, I've never once, Jacob, ever ever transformed an actual toy uh just to let you know so and then there's the, the button but yeah thank you yeah. so much thank you so much for that um yeah who, who knew man back in the day who knew that this was uh we were still going to be talking about it <laughs> you know it, i got we got we'll talk to beast wars in a second so when did you yeah. get interested in acting and how did that passion evolve into the desire to pursue a career in the entertainment wow. industry I, man, I don't know if I've ever said this, uh, talked about this on an interview. Maybe I have in the past, but maybe not. Um, I, I, you're, you're you're maybe too young to remember the. Well, maybe you're not. Maybe, maybe you you know just by osmosis and um, and knowing that the local cable channels. Always, every town had a local cable channel. Their their you know their cable access channel, uh, and our town uh, was no different. And um, I, I was in radio at the time. I was, I was very young. I, I got a job somehow working overnights on the weekends at my local radio station in uh, in in place Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, which is uh, near Toronto. I've, I've been in LA for in the U.S. for a, a lot of years, so way back. But that's where I started, and I got a job in the morning or in, in the uh, the all night show. Um, I was horrible, but someone gave me a shot, and then I also met. I think prior to that, around that same time. I was doing volunteer work at the local cable access uh, uh, station. And uh, my, my late grandmother had a show on there. Um, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. And she would interview local, local celebrities in my hometown. And I, I would do everything from behind the camera. Uh, I, would, I would operate the cameras. And I, always, I, and I, I just loved it. I, being in the control room and all the buttons and all the lights and and I just thought, God, I want to be a part of this. I, I don't, at that time, I really didn't know what what that was. Um, and then I kind of, I thought it might be kind of cool to be in front of the camera and do because I was always a ham. Every time you see home movies of me when I was a kid or or pictures, I'm always like this, you know, <laughs> or, or doing some weird stuff and wanting attention. And 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 none of my family is is like that. I'm I'm the old I'm the outcast weird one. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and, and and fast forward many years later, radio got me to uh, to Vancouver on doing the morning show and starting to do some characters on the morning show, and I started. I met people in in the. Uh, I started in the theater community doing some doing some shows. I had no idea about any of this. Um, it was just based on a good friend of mine, a couple of good friends of mine who had studied properly in in London at uh, at, at the Royal Academy and all this new wonderful sort of you know, and they said you know you should you should. Uh, come out and do some plays and it'd be fun. And, and, and I got into it and, uh, and that's sort of how it all started in, in, in Vancouver at that time, they were filming a lot of shows. X files was huge. Uh, and that was all shot in Vancouver. 
And, and I, I was able to get a couple of episodes of that. I did a couple of home movies or movies of the week and, and a couple of films on camera. And, and I, the first cartoon was um, the odd first cartoon for audition for a cartoon. I, I was doing the morning show. So I had all day long to do nothing. And I signed up for this commercial modeling course. And my agent at the time, Ross Rhodes, uh, called me and said, uh, so do you, do you know how to do voices? And I said, sure. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I, I had no idea what he's talking about. And he said, well, there's a cartoon GI Joe, got cartoons and GI Joe. Well, I watched some of those cartoons as a kid. I had some of the dolls. Uh, and so I, I went out for this thing, really not knowing too much about any of it. And uh, I remember getting a stack of paper and reading for different parts and, and they had me uh, pick up uh, the part of General Hawk, and I, I you know, and, yo, Joe, follow me toward the danger. Yo, you know, it's just sort of that uh, thing. And six weeks later, I, I had the part in my first, uh, you know, major part of my first cartoon. And, and then all the stuff I was doing on, on the air and radio and all the stuff, I, 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 I thought, okay, all right, I want to do this forever. This is, I found, I found something I, I really want to do. So that led to other voice work and other things. It led to a career in, in Los Angeles and in New York. And, and, and here we are today uh, somehow with a catchphrase like, yes, excellent. And I, it's like, it's, it's so bizarre because it was just on a kind of a white lie on just something I kind of fell in love with and, 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 you know, media and, uh, and here we are, man, I'm talking to you about it. It's the strangest thing. You just never know, you know? Awesome. I got to say thank you because Beast Wars Transformers was one of the few shows my dad and I watched together when I walked growing oh, up. That's true. Yeah. When you, anything father son related, you know, that's, I, I hear stuff like that once in a while and it just, uh, it's so cool because you don't realize, you know, what, the, what it, you, we're all doing a cartoon and a show and then you hear things like that and, and it, it, it lands. Because I always thought, well, all my friends are, you know, lawyers and doctors. They own buildings and they own this side and the thing. But, um, I, I always thought, well, I'm just doing funny voices, but there's been many times like what you've just said, it's, it sort of hits you in the heart. You go, oh, well, we, we do do something important and we do make a difference. We tell stories that, you know, and we make, we bring joy. The biggest thing is, is, you know, this, 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 this horrible pandemic, we're all sort of going through that, especially last year, the height of it all, when we were really in the dark about most of it. Um, it was one thing that kept me laughing. We were able to work from home and, and interacting with the fans, um, you know, through social media. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. My publicist will tell you that. Uh, she, she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it enable, enabled me to sort of, you know, uh, keep in touch and, and, and bring some joy. I mean, there was so much weird and darkness and awful things. I at least wanted to bring some smiles or laughter if, if we could. And that's sort of, sort of how I continue to, uh, to operate uh, in that, in that realm. Absolutely. Because I turned a lot to YouTube and got in classic episodes of beast wars that were uh -huh. on there. And yeah. it's been 17 years since that show made its debut on television. So oh. <laughs> in your humble opinion, how has Beast Wars made an impact on both pop culture and animation television? It, uh, you know, I, I, I will admit this on your show for the first time. Um, I haven't seen one episode from start to finish all the way through yet. Wow. I've seen snippets and pieces, but I, I'm one of those, I'm one of those, 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 uh, those those actors, you know, that I, I always disappointed with what I do and I go, oh, I could have done that better. So I just I decide not to watch in hopes that I won't disappoint myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, you heard it here first, folks, on Jacob's show. Uh, but I have seen pieces and I know, you know, I, I mean, obviously we did the scripts and we rehearsed and all that. Um, but yes. It, and so its impact on pop culture, I didn't really understand it until i was invited uh, i'm talking off mic here a bit invited to uh, my very first botcon uh, uh venus turzo and i was in rochester new york and um it was basically kind of across the border from where i grew up i grew up on rochester and buffalo television and um uh, and so 
we were there in Rochester and, and I, it was the first ever convention. And then we get there and it's like, there's thousands of people. And I believe Peter Cullen was at that, at that one as well. And, wow. um, and I had never met uh, Peter before. He's another, you know, ex Canadian. Uh, and uh, so the first panel we were all brought up on stage. We were marched out, you know, and then the people. Cla- and it's like it really is. It's weird, Jacob. It's like it's like you kind of feel. Oh, this is what rock stars feel like when they go out, you know. And people and I and I just felt so so strange because I'm I'm just like a kid from, you know, Podunk, uh, Canada. Who, who like what? How the hell does this go on? And then so I remember they're asking some questions, and I remember the uh, I think Ian Corlett was. I think Ian was there too. I can't remember. I think there was a few of us there, but. um Somebody in the back puts up their hand and, and, and uh, I said, yeah, at the back. And he says, hey, Mr. K, thank you for coming. Can you say excellent? Yes. And I went, okay. I went, excellent. Yes. And then, then the, whole, the whole room was, must have been like 11, 1,200 people. And they, they erupted. I went, oh, wow. Well, that kind of feels kind of powerful in a way. <laughs> It reminds me a lot of when Ian, Mark Hamill does the Joker laugh, or Ian McDermott does Palpatine, or yes. even when Lana, yeah. Del, Lana Perea does something about Regina from Once Upon a Time, and yeah. when he was alive, Robert Axelrod did Zed's iconic laugh, and Barbara and Carl Goodson did Barbara Goodson did Rita Repulsa's laugh. Yeah. because those yeah. are when fans go nuts. Yeah, well, that's that that you always want to hear. It's cool to see it on 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 the on the uh, on screen and on television, but when you hear it live from it's coming out of a, a person's mouth, it is you know. And I've I've had that experience as well when uh, certain people I've I've run into that, that I've uh, been fans of, and they say something, oh my god, they're you know, I'm a f- big fan of uh, the movie Office uh, Office Space, and and I've r- run into all of those actors, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it's so neat. And when I ran into Stephen Root, and I just said, I said, I man, I, I went up on an audition, and I just said, "Is I got to tell you," I said, first of all, it is Office Space, my favorite thing in the world." He said, "But that cartoon you did in, in space when you pay, played Chode," uh, I said, "That to me," <laughs> and he goes, "Oh my God, yeah." I, anyway, uh, I, I had the same reaction. It's it's part of pop culture, and, and to think that it's it's become part of the uh what would you call it the lexicon of the pop yes. culture lexicon uh is is so cool um it's it's a it really is mind-blowing honestly because i i was just a kid from my hometown of peterborough collecting comics and you know marvel and, and i used to spend saturday afternoons with my buddy he had his uh, part-time job and we were just we, i think we were, we were only 14 or 15 he had a part-time job at sandy's bookstore in my hometown and it burnt down it was the saddest thing but this basement of this old bookstore and it was all jammed with comics and to think the value of some of those books and we used to spend Saturdays going through he would sell them and I would be just going through comics and in my first ex- uh, exposure to Stan Lee Jack Kirby and all these great characters and 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 fast forward many years later I'm in the room talking to Stan Lee and and, and you know about being vision and and uh and um uh, uh, what's his name um oh yeah um uh, What's the bad? Oh, I'm like crying a lot of having a mental. Um, I, I let's see, vision. I'm trying to think of the uh, villain. I was the villain. I was uh, yes, uh, the, the German. You know what's his name? Red Skull. Uh, Red Skull. Uh, not Red Skull, but the uh, oh, Armin Zola. Armin Zola. Uh, though that was uh, Hamill played Armin Zola, and I played. Oh really? Uh, yeah. What was it? What was? The, oh my, cry, crying out loud! Somebody. He help said me. German, so I'm thinking Red Skull. The so, only two. No, so, so Avengers. Uh, um, I'll think of it in a second, and uh, because it's a weird. Oh, one yeah. Uh, uh-huh. No, no, it wasn't him. <laughs> it wasn't him. <laughs> but anyway, it was I was, you know, in, in the Marvel show and there's Stan Lee. And uh, and, and I did my little character for him. And, and, and Mark Hamill was in that day as well. And uh, I always tell this story that uh, it was I think it was Mark's birthday at that time. We were all in the episode uh, and we we're doing an episode. Stan came in to do his role. He did a little cameo in, in the episode. And he, the font on his uh, in the studio, the font on his paper was like, you know, was that big, like large letters. He, I mean, he was 90. What was he, 92, 93 at that time? Um, and uh, and he leaves and we all were like, wow, isn't that so cool? Stan was here. And we and Mar- and, and, and I think it was uh, Roger Craig Smith to play, play Captain America. So do you see the see the size of the font? 
Like it's like, and Mark Hamill said, "Hey, we should all be so lucky to have font that big." And I go, <laughs> "Wow, he's right." You know, to be in that business that long and to uh, have affected people's lives. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, I've talked my, you know, I've sort of talked around your question, but I think you get the gist of. Uh, I totally get yeah. it. The, the, we yeah. got before we leave Beast Wars, we got to talk about Megatron because your yeah. evolution, his evolution over those two series, you see him go from comical to all the way to God complex and sinister mm-hmm. the side figure, yeah. and then he becomes it in Beast Machines, and then yeah. there's another rendition of the character that was played through for Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. How did you keep those two Megatrons similar, different, but not so similar? Well, I remember the uh, direction that came when we were doing the, uh, was it the third season, the fourth, third or fourth, third season, um, where it was, uh, he was more godlike, and, you know, more, um, the, the humor. I know, I know that um, uh, Larry Dottillo and Bob Forward, had, uh, were the writers in the first, and there, there was some, I call it Spider-Man humor, the old Spider-Man humor, like, you know, sort of snide remarks and there's some comedy in there. And, uh, and Megatron, we get to play that too. Stop calling me that. Yes. My queen. Yes. Stop. You know, the, all those oh, little, funny little all that Inferno nonsense. Stop calling me that. Inferno. Yeah. Yeah. What's been it? Oh dear. You know? Uh, so there was a bit of comedy. I call it Shakespearean sort of comedy, some moments where, you, but as it got further on and the last ones is a little, little darker, um, which I kind of I kind of liked it. I liked the animation. The animation at that time, it, you know, we see we would see the rendering of the new animation, of the Beast Wars, and we're like, "Wow, this is so." Well, look at this is the future. But when you look back on it today, you're like, "Wow, that's pretty rudimentary." Uh, but as it got on, the technology and animation got better, and you really start to see the evolution. And then Megatron got even more, you know, more serious. I like all the versions, but I had to be careful not to bring any spider-man humor into it is it was a very it was, you know he was uh the um omnipotent or um, omnipresent or whatever he was the big uh you know the voice the big, and, head. The big head yeah the giant yes you know even darker these uh, machines i think was the darkest we've ever seen megatron mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that was the direction to begin of the season say okay sue blue sitting you know pull back the you know the yeses and the uh, they, we're just gonna you know he's uh he's this and that and we got a bit of a uh, overview about where the where the show is going and uh and that's how we we played it you know awesome and t- okay but in 2007 you became the first actor going from megatron to optimus prime for the transformer animated so why <laughs> you decided it was time to go to voice optimus i didn't decide at all i was uh ready to do megatron again i remember being getting the audition i was still in canada at the time of vancouver and uh we're making plans i was on an airplane like for 10 years back and forth a, a lot and we're making plans to to move down, and and I I did I reached out to Sue and said, hey, I, th- I hear they're doing some auditions for you know Transformers. I'd love to be involved. Oh, honey, oh my God, yeah, yeah, blah blah blah. And I go, excellent. So got all the sides read for different roles, and of course, I didn't even think really about Optimus at all. I don't even I don't think I read for Optimus. I just read for villains, and you know, I thought, okay, gonna get back on the on the Megatron horse again. Did, yeah, actually did my thing, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, sent it in, and, it, uh, and I got a call back. So I'm on an LA at the Cartoon Network, and I'm like, "All right, here we go." And I meet everybody. Derek White's in there, and, and uh, uh, gosh, you know, Sue's there, and, um, and, and Matt, uh, Matt Youngberg, and uh, yeah, you know, the folks in the Cartoon Network, not the producer. And so it was fun to go in and read a bunch of stuff. And then they said uh, after they go, "All right," you know, everybody's like, hey, hey, "Old, telling old stories," and. And she said, hey, honey, can you pick up uh, the sides for, uh, for Optimus? Um, we, ha- we haven't really you know, found it. We're kind of going for like a younger Tom Hanks. We're kind of going for like a, a naive thing. Maybe, you know, maybe just try your own voice. And I said, oh, okay. So I stepped out to just work on it a little bit and look at it. And they brought a, a person or two in. And, and I went back in and just sort of, you know, you know transform and roll out. I just did sort of my voice. I've made them a little, little younger. And then you could see them all like, their heads are going like this in the room and they're all talking. And, and I, did, I think I did it one or two more times. And then went, Hmm, well, that was interesting. Uh, the good guy. <sighs> yeah. Right. Um, and anyway, it was about maybe a few, <coughs> three or four weeks later. Oh, water break. <laughs> that I was driving through Chinatown, downtown Los Angeles. It's Chinatown, Jack, forget about it. But I was driving yeah. through Chinatown. And I got a call from Age. He says, ah, DK, so hey, good news. They're going to cast, you know, they want you to uh, in, in Transformers Animated. I go, oh, excellent. I'm 
And she said, uh, so that they're booking you for the, for the role of Optimus Prime. And I'm, and she's talking and I'm like, I said, I, I thought I heard, like, I, I, I thought I heard it, but I'm thinking, well, that, that's, that can't be right. Optimus. Well, that's, that's, why, why would that, why would it be, you know, casting me as Optimus? And I said, so they want me as Optimus. She says, yeah, Optimus Prime. I go, oh, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> I remember hanging the phone up, and I was happy, but I thought, oh, God, what am I going to do? I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, they're going to find out. I have no idea what I'm doing. And, and uh, yeah, that's how it sort of happened. And I was, like, kind of hit upside the head a little bit um, about when I got that role. <laughs> it's like, well, this is going to be interesting. So I'm now the good guy. And it took a little bit to kind of get into that rhythm everything to me is music and jazz and there's a rhythm to every character and every every you know role once you find that then you know it becomes a little easier it took me a few episodes to get uh, into it um but once i found it yeah it was uh we had so much fun uh guests that come in on that show and different and weird al came in and, and worked with us and and fred willard before he passed away that was you know a joy and just yeah it was just it was really so much fun and it was awesome. hard to believe. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. many Marvel, as we spoke before, many Marvel true believers might recognize you as the voice of some of Marvel's top characters. Besides Vision from Avengers Assemble, you also voiced Professor X in Apocalypse in one of my favorite yeah. X-Men series, X-Men Evolution. X-Men Evolution, yes. Yeah, and, right. Beverly. Beverly. Will's Will. <laughs> yeah. And then also you voiced Mysterio in, Spire, in, two, in two video games, <laughs> Spider-Man Shattered Dimension and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. Mysterio! <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you have Corvus Glaive from Avengers Assemble and Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon. And, of course, oh, yeah, Marvel. Corvus. <laughs> yeah. And, and who else? Uh, that's basically it. So what were some of your favorite moments for voicing these roles? Um. Well, just be, being in the studio with all those other clowns <laughs> was a lot of fun, you know. Uh, um, Travis Willingham, uh, and 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 Roger, and and Bumper, who was of course in in Transformers Animated. Uh, who else? And uh, oh gosh, all... <laughs> Mark was in that day and working with Stan Lee, working with all those people and, and, and the people involved behind the, the scenes, our director, Colette Sunderman and and the writers for Marvel. Um, the friendships we we all made from from that show was just such a great cast. Uh, Freddie Tatashore. There was a lot of times where it was very difficult to concentrate because we were laughing so hard um, during between takes and and screwing around it was a very uh very very fun room um vision basically you know vision became it was paul bettany's vision sort of in here you know incoming sir you know down back in the throat um and uh gosh what's the you know we, we i'm gonna have to do a uh ask the oracle about uh give me one second here um you can still see me right of course yeah let's see what's the uh uh, 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 uh uh, I, I have to do because it's going to drive me nuts if I don't tell you what this role was, uh, and I should know. Uh, I'm just... uh, 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 let me see. Uh, 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 I wonder who it is. <laughs> yeah. Jarvis. Um, Jar oh, yes. Jarvis. Well, it was Jarvis, and then he became Vision. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. More, you know, more uh, in, in this in this vein and then it became sort of Paul Bettany with the movie um <laughs> and uh gosh who else was uh on well, the cast yeah um uh, Freddie uh, Troy Baker yeah Bumper Travis and Laura Bailey uh uh Liam O'Brien was Red Skull and the uh, uh McWingert Jen Hale and Charlie Adler uh James Masters the third is uh, is uh black panther those were those were a lot of fun um uh baron ah i have it now i know i remember jacob baron von simo baron von oh, simo yes. why did i not forget baron ah, simo why do i have trouble 
Why do I have trouble with that? Because I, I think I, because of I think Armazol and Red Skull, no one Zemo's been forgotten about. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I had the, the episodes and the Black Pants and I died a horrible death. And that's what Stan Lee said. Give me a little Baron von Zemo. Yes, Mr. Stan Lee, it's Baron von Zemo. And he goes, very good. But, you know, I did the whole thing. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. But th- those moments, again, I got to come back to the fact that, you know, Stan working with Mark. Uh, Mark and I worked together in, in the regular show, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but working with Mark, I mean, anytime you work with, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker is kind of all right. <laughs> I totally agree. So we got to start winding down our interview. I cannot leave st- end this conversation without talking to you about being an announcer for last week tonight with John Oliver. It's an incredible oh, show. It's yeah. fun a lot of yeah. different stuff. Yeah. Got a, I got, uh, I got the old, uh, you know, the last week tonight, uh, John Oliver. Uh, pop oh, thing. nice. There he is. Nice. There. Yeah, I, I, the rap party was the first, uh, last rap party before the the pandemic hit. We're there in November before all hell broke loose in in, in the new year. And uh, I asked John, and they they want to. I've been at the Emmy Awards. Never thought I'd get close to an Emmy, and even let alone you know hold the damn thing. Um, that was kind of cool. And I, I asked him at the rap. I said, "So what do you like? Did you think it was going to be? You know." Because when they asked me, my manager called me and said, can you work on like a Saturday or Sunday? And I'm like, ooh, hmm, kind of sacred territory. That's like, I kind of want to do stuff. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. And they said, well, the show, they're going to. I said, well, you know, let's try it. Like, what is it? And she, well, it's kind of a news. It's like John Oliver. Said, yeah, I know, I know him. He was on, you know, John Stewart. Like, so like, and, and I thought, well, you know, let's give it a try. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, 12 Emmys later, um, the show's won all these Emmys. And I asked John what he, how he thought. He said, I don't know. Don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. But those people work their butts off. Um, I got a chance to talk to, uh, some of the uh they have investigative journalists to go to go deep like i mean they they go deep uh and and they're very thorough and and they have like a legal department uh <laughs> must be as long as my arm uh because uh it's it's that that part of the show fascinates me and and how they're very they may you know make damn sure that they're going to do something they're uh you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do it right um and just just being involved in that show is amazing and and most mornings on sunday i'll get up and we'll do the that days um and now you know sometimes there's some longer form stuff but it's just such a you know how is this still a thing it's just me being i'm your announcer man from the 1970s or the 80s whatever it was i'm gary i'm gary owens who's an old you know, radio and TV star back in the day. And that's kind of where the timing, the comedic timing comes into play. And it's just, and, and, and what a, what a thrill and an honor is to be involved in that. It's just, I always say that when you get into this business, you, you know, you would like the roles like that, but you just, you read everything and do everything you can to do all of it because you just never know what's going to stick. Things you think are going to be, Oh, this is going to be a hit and things you're like, ah, this isn't, this isn't going to go anywhere, you know, takes off. You just don't know. So uh, I read everything and have fun. And my, my most important thing for me is, is to get in this room and just have a ton of fun. And that's all I want to do. I just did a cartoon years ago. One of my earlier ones, uh, Mickey Rooney uh, was in the cast, uh, you know, and, and uh, he was holding court at the rap party and, and uh, he said something to all of us, which was, it s- still sticks with me. And he said, I have some advice for, for all of you. Don't ever grow up. Don't ever grow up. And I went, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Just, you know, don't be, don't, don't be afraid to make a fool of yourself. Don't, why, why do we need to, I mean, we need to do adult things when we're growing up, but we don't need to grow. I mean, you know what I mean? Let's have some fun because we, we get to go around the, around once. So um, let's have a, let's have a good time. <laughs> And that was good advice from uh, from old Mickey. You know, awesome, David. Yeah. So, where can my audience connect with you on social, and where ah. can I see some of your shows? Um, at uh, you see uh, at DKVO on Twitter. Uh, Tara Strong hates that; has always hated that to handle. But I'm she's a goddess when it comes to Twitter. I'm an I'm an idiot, but um, uh, at DKVO voiceover uh, on both that and Instagram. 
I'm not as active as much on Instagram. It, it, at some, I, you know, there's some older pictures there. The Ratchet and Clank movie. There's some really cool pictures of uh, James Arnold Taylor and myself at the movie. Hard to believe that's been out for, God, 2016? Good. Wow. How does time go so fast? Uh, the, new, the new game is out, of course, and it's uh, still breaking records and so much fun uh, rift in time. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, there, I do have a Facebook page. Uh, you can find me there. Most I'm mostly active on Twitter. On Twitter, I would say. And uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, we we do cameos, and that's been uh, that's been a big hit. Um, that's a lot of fun. And uh, there's the there's a web store on my web page at davidk.com. There's some new pictures. Uh, uh, of course, uh, any Sashomaru fans, uh, any Yasha and Yashihime fans, uh, we're in the middle of uh, season two right now. And that's so much fun to be back doing that again after so many years. There's some uh, some monograph pictures and stuff. And and these, yes. The, the yes buttons, they've been... Uh, they've been a, they've been a hit. That's uh, I mean, I can't stop playing with a damn thing. And I'm, I'm you know, anyway. <laughs> our, our... Yeah. Alrighty, guys, if you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ezra podcast, visit our Apple Podcasts, yeah. Deezer, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify, Spreaker, Podcast Addict. That's Jake's Take with Jacob Ezra, J A C O B E O Y A C H A R. Are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, Jacob Ezra, J A C O B E O Y A C H A R. And David, just to let you know, Jake's Take.com is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Oh, congratulations. Thank wow. you so much. I really appreciate That's it. That's very cool. I, I love doing this. It's one of my favorite things to do. And to read all my interviews, my articles and reviews, jakes-take.com. And guys, if you're financially able to, please consider heading to PayPal to help keep jakes-take.com and my platform up and running. If yeah. you can't, I totally understand. But however, a good alternative, a good, nice like and follow on social media David, thank you so much. It was truly an honor and privilege to speak with you. And thank you so much for being my guest on my very first Halloween special. Ah, th- that's no problem at all. Uh, and I uh, really appreciate it, man. It's 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 uh, it's my my honor. And and don't forget to have to have a happy Halloween. <laughs> all right, David. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you so much. Have a happy and safe Halloween. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time. Thank you.